today I'm walking you through a routine that I think is going to take us about 20 minutes to try and improve kyphosis, so rounding of the upper spine. This is going to be a little bit of a thoracic upper spine mobiliser and also a shoulder mobiliser. So we're looking to make you feel by the end of the routine like you're not quite so hunched forward and that your shoulders are back over your hips and your head is back over your body comfortably without you trying to force it. Before we start, I have to caveat, this is not a routine that is bespoke for your body. So it is likely that some of these exercises might not feel right for you to do. Do not do things that make you feel pain. So pain is different to symptoms of hard, sorry, symptoms. Pain is different to signs of hard work. If the exercises make you wobbly, they give you a cramp, they make you feel like your muscles are burning, those things are good. If these exercises make you feel, ouch, my normal symptoms of pain feel worse, do not continue to do them. It should go without saying that pushing through pain will never get you out of pain. But I have had too many clients where I know that that's not what they believe. So I really want to get that into your heads before we start today. Pushing through pain never gets you out of pain. This is not bespoke to your body. So whilst this is a kind of blanket exercise menu for people with rounding of the upper spine, there could be something else that's happening with you in your posture, in your body that needs to change first before your body will allow us to unlock your upper body. So I have to say that to caveat, I cannot comment or advise your individual body without assessing your individual body first in a one-to-one -one appointment. So I hope this routine is helpful and I think it should be good for most people, but listen to your body, do not do things that cause you pain. So for today's exercises, I think we're gonna do about 10 in total. Um, you're going to need two yoga blocks or it doesn't need to be um, yoga blocks, but something around about their height. Um, you can use two shoe boxes, two small piles of books, two firm pillows, but you just need something that's a bit like that. And then you're also going to need something, and then I'm gonna to come to our first exercise, which is static back. So you're going to need something that you can put your legs over here. So if I was being finickety, I would think that this is probably a little bit too low because my ankles are a little bit lower than my knees. You're looking for something where your ankles are propped up at the same height as your knees and that's gonna allow you to allow everything to let go. So this is the static back position. You're gonna to put to start with, you're just gonna put your hands to the side, palms facing up for me and try and relax everything off and just get a sense of how you feel here. If you feel like your neck starts to get tense the more that you lie here, it's probably a sign that you have this like rounding through your upper back and your body is uncomfortable because it's not used to flattening out and straightening that spine at the top. So if that happens, you can use one of your yoga blocks or pillows or whatever it is that you have just to prop under your head like so. So you're still here relaxing off and the aim of the game is that you want to get rid of pillows as quickly as you can, but you've got to work within the limits of your body. So there's no point taking away that pillow, your neck getting very, very tense and your body sort of seizing up around you. We want your body to be as comfortable as it can be before you then start moving on to doing other things. So for some people who are super, super, super stiff in their upper back or potentially anywhere really in their body, you might need to lie in this static back position for a good 10 minutes before your body feels comfortable. You might feel like your back is trying to arch or your pelvis is trying to twist or your body's trying to fight this position and we want this to be really, really comfortable. So you're gonna lie here being your own boss and making a judgment call as to when your body is ready. You're just gonna lie here just for a couple of minutes, taking some deep breaths and allowing your body to settle to the floor. You're not like pushing your body down, it's just happening as time goes on. And then once you've um, relaxed off here and you can feel your body settling, it's gonna be removing rotation through your pelvis, elongating your spine and opening up the shoulder thoracic region. You're going to take your hands into fists and put them up to the ceiling and take those elbows out directly out of your shoulder joint. We're then going to do 30 squeezes of our shoulder blades together. So you're imagining the muscles in between your shoulder blades, you're keeping your hands active in these fists and you're going to do squeeze, hold, release. Squeeze, 
hold, release. So it's the muscles in between my shoulder blades, my rhomboids, I'm contracting them together, I'm pulling my shoulder blades together, and I'm getting my shoulder blades in a more retracted position behind my body, which is what a lot of people struggle with because their shoulder blades have kind of slipped forward and got frozen in that position due to their desk job. So you are going to squeeze, hold and release your rhomboids. Let's do it 10 more times. You'll notice that my hands are kind of moving slightly, but it's not my hands and my elbows that are leading this movement. It's definitely the muscles in between my shoulder blades. Five, four, three, two, one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to keep your hands in those uh, fists nice and tight. And you're making sure that the shoulder blades squeeze back and down behind you and they're staying behind your body. As you try and, I'm gonna move my plant out of the way, try and take your hands back down behind you to touch the floor here. And then you're gonna take your arms forward. So the range of movement here is not touching the floor. You'll notice if you touch the floor, your shoulder blades hinge up away from the floor and that is that compensation at the shoulder girdle. It's the end range of movement should be touching the floor behind you and then bringing the arms forward and stopping around about here. You've got to keep those shoulder blades squeezed back and down behind you, just like we did in that previous exercise as we move through this. So I am just moving my shoulders as far as they can comfortably, sorry, moving my arms as far as they can comfortably. The rest of my body stays relaxed my hands are active in fists, but really everything else is fairly relaxed except for the fact that I'm keeping my shoulder blades behind me. Work within the limits of what your body can do comfortably. So some of you are not going to be able to touch the floor behind and that's absolutely fine. You might be more like here and that's great. It is going to be more productive for you to work within the limits of what you can do functionally rather than trying to sort of get back on the floor and your shoulders are lifting up and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So you're just going nice and slow, nice and precise, keeping the shoulder blades back and down behind you. They shouldn't lift off the floor. And you're doing what we could call lateral rotation of the shoulder. And we're just starting to loosen things up a little bit in that area whilst your spine is flattening off and hopefully starting to elongate so that we're gonna get rid of that kyphosis, the rounding of the upper spine. Okay, great. So we've done a few of those. Hopefully things are feeling a little bit looser in that shoulder area. Next up, we're gonna come and do some pullover presses, which is great for encouraging more thoracic extension, which is the opposite of having a hunchback. You're gonna take your hands above your head. You're watching, you're keeping your hands kind of interlinked together and you're trying to keep the base of your hands together as best you can. You don't want those hands like undoing and the wrists coming apart. You're keeping your hands gripped together. This is gonna force the work into the shoulders rather than the wrists just allowing, I don't know, anything to happen. We're really trying to knock this into the shoulders rather than anywhere else. So you're putting your hands up towards the ceiling, keeping those hands clasped together. You're then watching the direction of your elbows. So you will probably notice when you do this that the fleshy inner bits of your elbows face behind your head. You want to keep your hands together, but roll your elbows so that the fleshy inner bits face each other and the bony bits face out left and right. So right now the bony bits of my elbows are facing the camera versus the bony bits facing down my body. You've got to try and keep your arms in this position. So elbows, inner bits of elbows face each other, hands stay together. You're keeping your arms rigid. There is no bending at the elbows or twisting at the elbows or wrists. And you're going to take your arms back as far as you can comfortably without flaring your ribs and without bending or twisting those arms. So once again, just like the last exercise, you might only be able to come to here and then you notice that your rib cage really wants to flare. So it doesn't matter, just work within the limits of your body. You're better off um, encouraging functional movement than you are dysfunctional movement. So if you were flaring your rib cage, that is your lower back compensating for a lack of mobility in your upper spine. We are trying to encourage mobility of your upper spine in order for you to get rid of this kyphosis of the upper spine. So you're just moving through some of these. The hinge is happening at your um, shoulders. You can see that my arms are nice and rigid and strong. My hands are not floppy. 
and I'm touching the floor behind me, but you're just working within the limits of what you can do. We're going to do 10 more here, and then we're gonna change positions. So 10, and I wish I'd moved my arms out the way of the plants. I'm gonna to have to shift myself after this, is really annoying. Seven, so remember, no flaring of the ribs, the back stays flat, your whole body is relaxed, except for your arms and your shoulders. Four, three, two, one. Good job. And we're going to shake it out there. So we've done our little static back sequence, which is just, as I said, elongating that spine and loosening up your shoulders, hopefully in a way that most people can cope with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come to modified floor block. Um, I don't have a timer, so we're going to have to, I'm just going to freestyle this a little bit. Um, but you're going to now get your two yoga blocks or your two shoe boxes or your two piles of books. And I'm going to have to just shift myself around so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to come to a position called modified floor block. So for modified floor block, again, working within the limits of your body, I have chosen something which when I get into the position, which will make more sense in a second, my elbows are being held at shoulder height. So I want my elbows to be as high as my shoulders and my arms are cactus at 90 degrees. So, you know, the elbow comes straight out of the shoulder and there's a 90 degree angle at the elbow. The elbow is supported on the block um, and I'm going to have my toes together, ankles hanging out to the side, so they're pigeon toed on the floor. And then I'm literally going to put my hands on the blocks like so, and my head down. When you do this, don't face plant the floor with your face. So you're trying to go for that crown, that sort of like the top of your head here. You want that to touch the floor so that you're not just stuck on the floor like this. And I would normally give this to people for about five minutes to do. Um, I'm not gonna do it for five minutes just on the camera, but I'll count down for maybe about two minutes or so. So if you are very, very tight in your upper body, you might want to make sure that you've got something that's a little bit lower than these, um, but just see how you go. Give it a go. If your body starts complaining, if you get like a really, if it's too much, the sensations are too much, just go a bit lower or potentially go and do static back for a little bit longer. You've got to listen to your body. Just because I'm telling you to do this because it's good for people with kyphosis, doesn't mean that your body is ready for this yet. So this looks fairly innocuous, but I have lots of clients where this is a big struggle for them. So we're gonna relax here and you're literally switching off everything in your body. You might notice your lower back coming on, shoulders coming on and that type of thing. You are passively melting into extension here and removing rotation for your body. So this is for many people, the opposite of what their upper body is doing. I'm gonna put my head down and I'm gonna be counting in my head down from 120. Um, so that's gonna be about two minutes. But like I said, I would normally give this to people for about five minutes.
and then slowly, gently come up um, after this one. Be really careful because sometimes that exercise can give people a bit of a head rush. So because it's actually repositioning your head in relation to your shoulders, it can make some people feel a bit dizzy. So just go really, really slowly as you get yourselves up. You're going to pop these to the side, but you are going to be using them a bit later on. And we're now going to come to one of my favourite exercises, which is called upper spinal floor twist. So, so far, what we have done is we have elongated your spine um, lying flat on your back and opened up your shoulders a little bit in that static back position. That position there was getting you prone and really going after a bit more extension of your upper back. And now we're going after rotation of the thoracic spine as well as hopefully a good shoulder opener. So you're coming to your side on this exercise and your arms are out in front of you like you're gonna dive off a diving board. You might need to have a pillow here. So I either want you to have your head flat on the floor and relaxed or on a pillow. I don't want you holding your head here and getting really tense through your neck. None of the exercises that we have done should make you feel tense on your neck. And if they do, your neck is just not ready for what we have asked of it yet. So keep it propped up as much as you need, but the aim of the game is to take that away as time goes on. So you're gonna to come to the side like so. You'll see that my knees are kind of up at hip uh, height here. The most important thing in this exercise is watching this top knee. This top knee, when we move through it, is going to want to drift back away from the other knee. You've got to keep that pinned on top of the other one. At, there's, that is the only thing that you really have to focus on. So your head goes on the floor. You take the top arm and you can see here that I'm taking it straight out of the shoulder. I'm not taking it down and I'm not taking it like this. That's your body's way of cheating. It's going to try and avoid the shoulder stretch as much as it can by sort of looping around. You want to take it straight over. Remember your head's on the floor. My head is going to follow in the same direction as my arm. The other arm pins me down like this and I am concreting that top knee on top of the bottom one. And you're trying to actively lever yourself open so that the opposite shoulder and opposite hand touch the floor. And I'm going to count us down 60 seconds here. So just making sure that this top knee doesn't drift back. If you let the top, top knee drift back, you'll find that you can touch the floor easily because your pelvis is cheating, it's compensating. You want to try and keep that stacked and you might notice that your hand only goes here, but that's because you're getting the movement happening at the place that we want to get the movement from, which is the upper spine. So off we go. So 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, you should notice as time goes on, your body kind of relaxes into it a little bit more and you can go further and further. 30, you're not relaxing here though, you're actively levering yourself open. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, remember the top knee, push it forward just in case it slipped back. 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice job. And then you're going to swap sides. Just come out that gently because you might feel almost a little bit winded, but it should feel like a really, really good deep stretch. I'm already at 20 minutes, so this is not a 20 minute routine. I'll put it on the, uh, the name of the YouTube video so that we know how long it actually is. So same thing again on the other side. You're bringing those knees up and you're probably going to notice a real difference from side to side here. It's quite common. So arms out to the front, head relaxes off. Top arm goes out straight from the shoulder. Bottom arm holds those legs together and you open yourselves up trying to get that opposite shoulder down to the floor, taking your head with you. I'm going to do 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46. Remember that top knee, don't let it drift back. 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 
37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 10, 11, oh no, wait a minute, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nice. Oh, that is deep. So that is actually, that exercise, even though it's obviously mobilizing that upper back and opening up your shoulders, you may feel, which is what I get, almost a little bit winded at the bottom of your rib cage. And that's because that's where your hip flexors attach. So when your hip flexors go all the way back here, down into that groin. So when you're keeping those knees pinned together and opening up that uh, sort of thoracic cavity, you're actually stretching off your hip flexors, which sounds a bit weird, but it's the opposite end of the hip flexors to what you're normally feeling if you go for a hip stretch down in here, but it's the same muscle. So finally, we're going to do one more exercise, helping you get rid of that rounding through your upper back, that sort of tex neck uh, thing that's so common nowadays. And we're going to finish with static extension position. So static extension position, you're coming to all fours like so. You're going to walk your hand, just a handprint further forward, and you're watching and thinking, actually, am I as wide as I think I am right now? So lots of people go absolutely mad with their hands and their knees, you want your knees hip width and your hands shoulder width, which is narrower than most people think. You're shifting your weight forwards so that your shoulders are over your wrists and your hips are slightly further forward than your knees. You're untucking those feet and trying to get the shins on the ground if you can. Some of you might get a cramp in your feet just from trying to do that. If you do, that's fine. Shake them off, but try and come back to it. Um, you're sort of pushing for it, but again, you know, relax and be sensible don't just make yourself do something it will come in time so next important thing to note is the direction of your elbows again so just like those pullovers that we did at the beginning you want to make sure that the fleshy inner bits of your elbows face each other when you load your arms so you might notice that when you when you come to the all fours position your inner bits of your elbows face forward and they hyperextend. they buckle this is putting too much weight through your wrists and you're disengaging your shoulder here. It's putting the work into the elbow and the wrist rather than the muscles around here, which are really strong. So you twist your elbows so that the inner bits of your elbows face each other. Keep those arms straight. Imagine that you're a table, so there's no bending through them. Hips are slightly further forward than your knees. You're going to sink into your shoulder blades. So my shoulder blades are backing down behind my body right now. I'm really like dunking into my shoulder blades, keeping my arms nice and straight. I relax off my neck. Again, there should be no neck tension here. The neck is relaxed. And I'm going to roll an arch in my lower back and hold. So I'm trying to keep the tops of my feet on the floor, rolling that arch in my lower back, and I'm squeezing my shoulder blades back and down behind me and really keeping those arms straight, making sure that they're not bending or rotating. And I'm going to count this down another 60 seconds here. So 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, you might be able to hear my washing machine in the background now. 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47. If you get any symptoms of neurological impingement, so otherwise known as like pins and needles or coldness, really focus on your shoulder position. So if you're getting pins and needles through your arms, it's telling you that your shoulders aren't in quite the right position as you do this and also double check your elbows too. So if you've started creeping back to this hyperextended position and the shoulders are like popping out, that might be one of the reasons why you're getting pins and needles. Elbows face each other, shoulders are back and down behind, neck relaxes off, and you're trying to get the shoulders as far away from your ears as possible whilst you have that arch in your lower back. Got 20 seconds left, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Amazing. And you might just want to come to a quick little child's pose as a bit of a counter stretch to what you have just done. So that was 
Actually, maybe it was about 20 minutes because um, I did the talking at the beginning. So that was about 20 minutes worth of some exercises that are going after a number of different things, actually, but with a specific emphasis on that upper body position. So if you're spending lots of time hunched forward at a desk, you're likely to have hinged shoulders and curt rounding of the upper spine. These things are fine if they're happening to you temporarily and if you can take your body out of that position. But there are lots of people who get locked in this position and lose the ability to bend themselves the other way. This is when you're gonna start having issues. This is when you might start getting lower back pain or headaches, tension headaches. You might start getting things like tinnitus and vertigo. If you're very locked in this position and your head is forward of where it's supposed to be, it's gonna rattle you around a little bit. So don't underestimate how your posture can contribute to, if not cause, your symptoms of pain. And if you know that you are somebody who does look very rounded forward and you get random aches and pains, give this a go and see if you feel any better. But equally, remember, this is not made specifically for your body. So I don't know why you have your pain or how I can help you without assessing you and doing a proper sort of movement, like functional test type thing. But give this a go, listen to your body. I hope that it helps. And hopefully you can just start feeling things kind of loosening up a little bit here. So yeah, hope you enjoy.